So I recently made a spaceship bridge interior based off of a concept art that I saw done by Sid Mead, who designed uh, the Space Odyssey 2010 spaceship and a bunch of other really cool stuff. And um, when I made the base uh, surface, which is kind of like what I call the desk that goes underneath all these computers, I found that it needed to have some kind of detail. So I made this really cool material that I really fell in love with. Uh, and it's basically kind of an angular, squarey panels that are completely randomized and a grungy kind of smudgy texture on top of that to give it a little bit of age and imperfection. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make that procedurally, which if you don't know what that means, that means basically everything you see on the surface is mathematically calculated, literally with math um, and noise and random stuff and things like that. So it, it's uh, scalable, which means it'll never tile. Um, you have complete control over it. There's a lot of customizable options and you can get a whole bunch of different looks with, uh, you know, a little bit of work up front, you never have to touch it again. You can just build stuff, slap the material on it, and uh, and it looks cool pretty much instantly. So let's get to making those materials. So let's use the default cube and let's give it a little bit of shape so that when we make this material, we can really see what it looks like instead of looking at a boring cube. So I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode, make sure my faces are selected. And on the extrude tool, I'm going to do extrude individuals, click and drag outwards. There we go. And then I'm going to hit I to make an inset and then extrude again. Cool, easy shape, and it just gives you a lot of different directions for light and things like that. So let's get our shader view on top. So put your mouse in the very top corner. You'll see the crosshair icon. You see that my cursor changes to a crosshair. Click and drag down. This allows you to split the view. Now on the top left, let's do um, type and let's select the shader editor and click new. Let's name it uh, sci-fi panels, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to press in to get rid of the side panel because we don't need that right now. And to move around in your shader uh, view, just hold alt or option for Mac and left click and drag. It's kind of like panning, you know, X and Y. So we're going to go over here because we're going to build a whole bunch of stuff over here and we need lots of room. So let's uh, do shift A and in the search, let's type texture coordinate, put that all the way over here. Next is mapping. Shift A again, search. Next, we're going to make a Voronoi texture and put that there. Shift A again, type in ramp. Shift A again. <laughs> I know it's a lot, but just trust me. This is actually relatively simple when it comes to uh, making these types of materials. We're going to move these over. I'm going to click on it and hit G for grab. Shift A one more time and make a bump. There we go, put this down here. Okay, so we're, let's connect these all. So first we're going to connect generated to this top input, blue means vector. And then vector here to this vector. Next, we're gonna connect distance to that input, color to color one. Oh, I forgot one more uh, mix RGB, which you can duplicate it by left clicking and, and then typing shift D, duplicate. So this color goes to color one. Move these over again a little bit. I don't like things to be crowded. I like things to be nice and clean. Helps me think better. And connect color to base color input on your principled BSDF shader. Let's make another um, connection between this color of the first mix RGB to height. And let's put in our numbers. Let's do uh, 0.5 and 0.5. You don't ever want to overdo those because it looks real ugly. Okay, so let's get this view to where we can actually see what's happening here. So let's switch to material view. And you can't really see anything yet because our, our Verona texture is very subtle. So let's switch this to 40. Leave that as F1 and change the type to Chebyshev. Which is so much fun to say. All right. Next, um, leave W how it is. Let's leave scale right there, randomize all the way up to one. Now let's make this a harsh cutoff by moving the black up and then switching this to constant. All right. Next is this one's going to be set to difference. This is really the secret of this whole texture. I'll show you why in a minute. And then this one's going to be multiply and turn the mix all the way up and this mix all the way up. 
Okay, so here's the magic right here. Let's uh, click and shift D to duplicate. And we need the same vector. Okay, I messed up the color ramp. So let's fix this to linear. Keep the white near the middle. And let's actually put in the numbers dot 55. And then click on the black color and dot five. So they're right up next to each other. And now we've got this cool line. But don't don't stop now, it's going to get better. Um, so let's duplicate this color ramp down here and do basically a, a copycat setup there. And then this is going to go into the second input. So what's happening, and let's actually move this mix back because we're not going to add anything yet. So this is the difference node, right? So when you layer two images like in Photoshop or in nodes and you put it on difference mode, you're going to get some really ugly artifacts if the images are different. However, if they're the same, you get black. But what if they're almost the same? They're just a little bit off of each other. You're going to get um, some interesting effects. So we're going to shift this uh, from dot 55. Let's make this dot six. So it's moving up one and then make the black dot 55. So see what we did was we basically just moved everything up a little bit from where it used to be. And you can play with this too, but you do want them to be very close. So I'm gonna hold shift, left click on my factor, and I can really tweak it. Let's click on the black color over here, and then shift, left click and drag very carefully. We want some really fine lines, look at that. You can even get some like double lines going on. Pretty cool. So we have the same material. We haven't changed these. They're basically coming at, from the same point, but they have different color ramps and then they're being layered with difference. So if I turn difference off, we just have squares. But then we put that second copy on top that's really similar and we get, um, you know, these contrasting lines. Okay. Now, the reason why I don't duplicate this one Veronoid to these, these two color ramps is we do have more control now. We can scale. We can do scale up or down to get even more effects. We can play with the random. We can play with W to just give it literally randomization. So I like to have that uh, level of control there. It's very nice and very fun to play with. Let's finish it off by dragging, dragging our bump to the normal. And there we go. We've got some cool kind of uh, fake shading going on. One of the reasons why this uh, material is great for bump is because we actually have a gradient see that it's not a uh, constant ramp the color the constant color ramp would just be black and white but because we have it on linear and they're very close together we get uh you know this very subtle um kind of three-dimensional gradient going on which when it goes into the bump node it gets some really great effects and you can of course you know turn that up or down really just depends on your lighting and how harsh you want it to be but it is fun um, and it adds a nice touch when you got some cool lighting because the bump gives it kind of an added three dimensions. Okay, next, let's turn this all into a node group. And this is going to give you super easy, convenient control. Uh, and, and it's really good to know how to do this. So let's press B for box select, drag over everything we just made, go up to node and make group. Okay, so now see how the background's green? That means we're inside the node group and we have these weird... Uh, other nodes on the end that are different than what we're used to. Uh, but this is good. This is our output. We're going to have outputs on the node group and inputs. So if you press tab or this little up button, now we're back into the normal view. And look, this is our compressed little, you know, minimized group. Everything's inside of it that we just made. And we have these nice outputs to play with. Let's name this real quick. So go to in and over here in properties, let's give it an actual name for Blender to use. So sci-fi panel group. There we go. Now let's go back into it. You can click on it and press tab, or you can click on the little icon on the top right. And let's set up these inputs and outputs. So inputs are going to be basically sliders and color values that we can use to put into here. So we don't actually have to go into this anymore. We can just play with this, which will have a bunch of controls, and it saves us time. So let's set that up. Things we want to control would be the W factor, which is kind of a three-dimensional thing here let's connect w so in case we want to just randomize it we also want to control the scale so drag the scale over here and then drag this scale to a separate one so we can control the scale separately um, let's let's have control over our mix factor for difference just for fun our mix factor for multiply which i don't think we set up yet and the secondary color which is what we're going to layer on top and let's put the uh strength of the bump there as well so we can control that cool so it's looking kind of messy that's okay let's click tab or the up 
arrow. And now look, we got this really cool, looks like kind of like the principal shader, but a little different. And now we have all the controls we want right in front of us. So we've got the W, which just gives us new random, you know, noises. We've got the scale for each of them independently, but I'm going to leave them the same. We've got the mix factor for difference, uh, the factor for the color overlay, and that's this. So if we put in red, we can now mix in red on top just to give a little splash of color and the, the strength of the bump, which I think I had around half. There we go. So that's the basics of node groups. Um, if you go back into it, you can organize it by going over here to uh, in your, your um, in panel. You can move these up or down by clicking up or down. Um, I'm going to put the, my color at the very top. So press that up arrow and it's moving up. And then the factor for the mixing of that right underneath it. You can even set minimum and maximum values, which is really nice. So if you don't want your scale to go crazy, you know, you're going to keep your scale between like two and 10, you can do minimum, maximum. And that's a, a cool little feature there for sliders, um, just to make it easier to control. Okay. So we're done with this part. Let's make one more. Uh, node group, and that's going to be for the, the smudginess. I, I called it smudge. So let's make that now, and then we're going to make it into a node group next, just like we did. So let's start down here. Let's use my favorite noise uh, node, which is Musgrave, and then a ramp after that. And then we're going to do a brightness and contrast. And then lastly, a mix RGB Right here, don't, don't drag anything on top of a wire because it'll jump in there and mess it all up. So we're going to just do this down here for now. So let's connect these. So a Musgrave output to ramp, uh, ramp output to color, and then this color output to the bottom color, number two, on mix RGB. And let's switch this to screen. Now for our uh, settings on Musgrave, Let's keep it at five scale for now. Let's do 16 for detail, zero for dimension, and two for lagunarity. I don't think I've ever said that word in my life. <laughs> that bottom one. So these settings combined will give a real gritty, dirty uh, noise, very high detail. Um, now for our colors, let's switch this to a um, kind of a, a light gray, because these are all gonna go into the roughness and it's gonna give us a lot of variety. Now this is gonna plug into roughness right there. And let's select these. We can already see it's got this grime going on. Sorry, I made you wait for it. There it is. Uh, let's uh, box select these again, B for box select, node, make a node group. Now we wanna have control over these things. So let's start connecting some uh, stuff to the inputs. So I wanna control scale from the outside. I wanna control the brightness from the outside. Also the contrast, which is basically the brightness and contrast of the noise, which is gonna disrupt our roughness and give us imperfections. And then we want our original color, which is really in this case, our original amount of roughness to be controllable and the amount of mix to be control. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> and also the amount of mix to be controllable right there. Okay. Let's go up. Now, before we get distracted, let's name it. I'm going to call it smudge. Oh, smudge group. Let's go back into it and move our color to the top because the color is a very important um, thing we need to have more accessible and then move the factor up as well underneath it. There we go. So if I go back to normal node view, I've got color, which is our initial amount of roughness. So if we put it at black, black is actually a low number, which is zero. And that means zero in roughness means what? No rough, which means very shiny reflective. Now, if we put it up at white, white is you know, one or hundred percent. And when you have full roughness, what does that mean? It's not shiny. It's very rough and not reflective like plastic. So um, this is how you set your initial amount of reflection that you want your surface to have. I usually like it somewhere in the middle or below the middle, a little bit of shine, but not too much. Let's give some more room here so we can see more of the, uh, there we go. That's pretty. Get some light shining off of it. That way we can really see what's going on. So first you set your, your reflection amount with the color. Then we can uh, basically with this factor slider, we can control how much of the noise we're adding in. So right now there's no noise being added. There's no smudge. 
No imperfection. We want it more dirty and grimy, turn it all the way up. Well, if it is all the way up, we can really see what's going on with the scale. Low scale means large noise. High number means, you know, much smaller noise. Somewhere, it really depends on your scene to play with your scale to get it just right. Okay, and brightness is the brightness of the noise, which is going to kind of make things more on the reflective side or on the rougher side. Keep that at zero if you want it to be neutral. And we have contrast as well to make a more difference between the dark and the light areas. So just com total control, you know, uh, that's what I like, because that way I can customize exactly what I need for my scene. And there you have it. That's your procedural sci-fi panel with some smudge. Well, I hope you learned something about procedural textures and node groups and how to work efficiently. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or if I went over anything too quickly, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.